160 hours. That's how many hours I've logged so far in Farthest Frontier. Hello again there, friends and fans. Raptor here, and today I wanted to take you on a tour of all the cities, big and small, new and old, that I really made a difference in my gameplay style in Farthest Frontier. Everything from massive military walls and big defenses and gates, all the way down to beautiful parks, gardens, and techniques that I learned by playing the game with you during our live streams, tips from the developers, and by making a lot, a lot of mistakes, learning from those and making the cities bigger and better and even more beautiful than before. Well, thank you very much for leaving a like here today so more people can find these videos through the algorithm to find out about Farthest Frontier and, of course, all the tutorials in the game that we've made so far. With that 160 hours, there's plenty of tutorials on military, on how to get cows, on how to make farms, and how to build beautiful cities that function and that lasts. So, if you haven't already, make sure you do subscribe to check out all those other videos. Make sure you jump on our Discord for giveaways for this game and more. All you have to do is be a subscriber, and I'll see you in our first city. Let's go! And here we are at our first stop, Raptor Valley. This city, very, very important because it is really, truly the most recent city that I've been building, taking into account all the lessons that I've learned from all the previous cities and some new ones too. Like for example, this beautiful blueberry farm over here by this lake. A lot of lessons have been learned to get up to this point, and this city is coming back strong after a big invasion and an outbreak of smallpox. You see people moving into the city, and uh, the population getting very close now, upper uh, 150s towards 200, and pretty soon we'll be able to go on to tier 4. Beautiful layouts of all sorts of different city districts separated by walls, which helps to repel invaders, and also, of course, to separate the district, uh, districts for a very visually pleasing and also kind of a more organized setup. As you can see here, these blueberry farms are kind of on the outskirts of town near the lake. And by the way, if you'd like to learn how to do these blueberry farms with the foragers, make sure you check back at some of the other videos on the channel to see how to move the blueberry bushes into a kind of organized pattern. And then of course use foragers in order to harvest those for somewhat of a free farm. It doesn't cost you anything uh, to do those really, a very small cost for a very big reward. You can also see here some nice trees placed by all of these uh, different fences or really these stone walls. These are not military defensive walls, but they definitely will work to defend the town against military invasions for a brief moment. Uh, every second will count for our troops when it comes to getting into position. So all of those uh, wonderful trees and such there kind of mark the edge of what would be uh, down here, our commercial district. Now, over in the lower left corner, we're actually getting ready to build a blacksmith down here and we'll probably expand a little bit more into heavy industry into this corner as we're manufacturing is in the center around the town square. And of course, the first lesson that I've learned that I thought was really impactful and, and important is to build all of these defensive towers near the center of the city. Wow, eight more people want to join. Excellent. Well, just as we're talking, we're making progress. So anyway, uh, the city has its trade depot here in the middle with a lot of storage buildings around it. You see a couple of warehouses here uh, that are storing all sorts of different things. In fact, in this game, the detail is so beautiful, you can actually see like arrows being stored, uh, different types of stone blocks, shoes, gold, uh, even weapons and such here too, which is really, really cool. You can actually see what's inside the warehouses often or the storehouses just by looking. But these two here just like the uh, stockyards are defended by these towers here. And so that'll keep pretty much everything safe within this very tight knit web of defenses. Now, obviously walls are more ideal, but they take a very large amount of stone and you need a very large military to protect walls. Walls don't really work without a force to actually defend them. And so if you have to defend, you may as well consolidate your defenses. And that's what we've, what we've done here time and time again with the barracks being built so that way all the towers can go to tier 2 and add even more defenses far outside the city. So in addition to that, we built a beautiful little uh, main street or I guess a, a main road here down to the upper and lower parts of the city. And in the south, we're going to actually got very lucky with a lake on either side here. We're going to build ourselves a gate and a large wall here to defend the southwestern part of the city. In fact, the southern uh, part is actually defended by a lake so that way the enemy either has to go west through this gate or eventually defenses that we'll build up here. And uh, as you can see, we've also built some other uh, businesses outside the city. And so thus, if the enemy tries to go around, they're also going to have to go through some of these other districts that are somewhat defended. Not only do we have a tower here to protect against bears and other animals, but also if an invader tries to come here, they'll have to work all the way around to the gate to attack the tower. And that's a good thing because that'll buy us time to work on the main city defenses while they make progress over here on some very small 
uh, important buildings, very um, small in their importance, I should say. Wood choppers and smokers are not something that's very difficult to rebuild, nor are they resource intensive. But we've been eliminating wolf dens, of course, by building towers closer to those dens and then using these towers to provide lookout for attacks that could come on the city. So one thing that I've learned by playing this over and over again is truly that maps are really... Uh, what you make of it. Uh, at the start, this map didn't really appear like too much, except for the fact that there was a large cliffside here uh, by this lake, and the cliff is actually very important to give us defense here too. So the enemy really can't attack us from the east, they have to attack from the northeast. The enemy can't really attack us from uh, the south, they have to attack kind of in between these corridors. And if you were playing a game such as perhaps They Are Billions, this would be much more easier to defend. Look at that, even the detail in this game of the geese flying around uh, just before winter. Look at that. Migrating for the season. That's crazy. And look at the formation. Gorgeous. You have to take a look at these moments, too, for all the great detail. Leaves falling, geese flying through, trees and grass and other things changing color. Incre just impressive. Incredible. Amazing. Just amazing. I, I, there's, It's the most just cool thing that I've ever seen. Games needed this long ago, uh, especially like city builders and such. So it's great to see this game getting it. I'd love to see more seasons in games like City Skylines, etc. We built a lot of defenses here too around the uh, outside of the city for highways going to resources before we were gathering coal here. Now we're gathering clay and there's deer and such out here too. So that's why we built hunting cabins and more smokers outside the city too. And actually trying to make these buildings more permanent. It'll always be useful to have a hunter. It'll always be useful to have these smokers rather than just tossing them next to the wayside of a road or tucking them into a... a uh, maybe like a forest. We've added them to the really just the beauty of the city. We've added them as kind of a, a sight to behold as you leave the city walls. Same over here with some of the more stinkier industries and uh, these buildings have been attacked and destroyed and attacked again and we're adding more defenses now than ever before. These large towers here along the roadway were destroyed and the enemy destroyed our soap factory and our um, uh, hide our tannery, which makes hide coats and also our compost. So we're going to have to improve security here once again and continue to build walls around these things in order to defend them. Raptoria will come back time and time and time again. You can see all the deaths here at the graveyard, an indication mostly of, uh, well, a couple of uh, glitches from early uh, day releases, such as farmers that were glitched out in the fields here that weren't able to return home and starved out in the fields, which was really weird. And a lot of animal deaths and raider deaths too, as well as a massive outbreak of smallpox. In fact, one of the greatest in terms of size of outbreaks of smallpox I'd ever seen took place during this map. And luckily we had this hospital, rather we had a healer's hut ready to go, which now we've upgraded to a hospital to make sure that never happens again. And if it does, the outbreak will be well maintained. Keep in mind that your healer's hut holds 10 people. We had an outbreak of about 12 or 15 people. And so now the upgraded hospital should hold up to 30 people and that's going to be really amazing so it's really good to see all sorts of uh, awesome and fantastic uh, different types of people moving around the city and doing all sorts of different things and different designs coming into that and uh, people being able to actually work within those areas we have a lot of problems now with waste and that's why we're rebuilding that area in the east but regardless of that we've also built a wonderful farm here and also a forager and uh, a hunter in on that as well and we'll probably build a root cellar nearby as we have a brewery here which will take all of that grain from a wheat field up here. This wheat field will be used uh, for beer and for the well, or f rather for the mill here. We'll need a well nearby for the bakery too. Uh, but anyway, we will be making a beer here. So we've got a well nearby. And so grain is being provided there. Honey is being provided there. And water, I think, is also part of the mix. Yeah. And so that's making beer. And then, of course, that's being sold in the pubs for good money. And then, of course, with that being nearby, the wheat field just there with the storage, it's just a short walk to deliver grain to make flour and then eventually bring that to the bakery in the town here, which then makes a lot of bread for the city. And uh, actually, I think it's almost too much for everybody to eat. If we take a look here at the numbers, 106 going into the winter, that thing creates flour. The mill creates flour uh, day and night throughout the entire year. And it's the same with the uh, bakery, too, making bread all year round. We have ourselves three markets here too, finding out the importance of keeping buildings together and using elevated defenses like this and trying to use a lot of flattening of land in this map that is an alpine map. 
Very good one indeed, I must say. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. Happy with the defenses, although uh, it's getting much more difficult to defend. We're starting to identify the areas in which we can really use to our advantage here. We'll be building more Tier 2 towers and defending on where the enemy may come from uh, in the more bigger choke points. Smaller choke points, I should say, but an area which we have a bigger chance of getting them, like, for example, over here. And leaving a little door open so we can eventually lead them into attacking these towers rather than attacking the wall for the third or fourth time so using the natural layout of the land and elevation to protect ourselves and to make it look beautiful this map is going to be one you're really going to want to check out sometime again soon so i must say that of all the maps that i've played i always say it but this one's probably my favorite uh, biggest map that we've played and a huge diversity of trees and stones and iron ore and sand and a lot more around so i've got to say that uh, this is probably going to be one of the maps that uh, has been the most challenging for me with raiders getting more aggressive and disease being more uh, aggressive as well more outbreaks so all those lessons being learned still challenging still fun and one that i must say that uh, i'm happy that i'm here and i think it looks great despite all the setbacks and trouble but that's what you want for a hardcore realistic city builder when you're playing on the most brutal difficulty go so check out another city now and see what else we've got waiting for us well, the map that started it all, one of the biggest ones here in Farthest Frontier that I've had the opportunity to make so far. <laughs> Lots of lessons learned in this one about city layout, and of course also building defenses in and outside the city. City so big that I've decided to put an insane wall around it, building towers and then eventually upgrading them to tier 2 guard towers. And of course, uh, well, we had a smaller wall around it before and now we're just building and rebuilding defenses where the raiders try to get in. And luckily, we have a massive lake here, hence the name Lake Raptoria, that goes all the way down and seems to continue on almost forever on the entire southern side of the city, meaning that mostly we've got to defend the east, west, and north side with some side, uh, south side entrances too to the city. A lot less organized, a lot less thought out than the other cities as we learned a lot about the industrial sections. And looks like some of these buildings are taking damage too. I think one of the more recent updates to the game has kind of like made the uh, buildings a little bit more damaged for whatever reason. Not exactly sure. Or perhaps increased the health for these buildings. And since these are older cities that I'm loading for the first time for the save, they might have changed how much HP these buildings have. And also maybe made the invaders a little bit more aggressive and possibly more likely to attack those buildings. Regardless, this map is huge. We've gone all the way up to the north. If you want to see how big these maps truly are for the game, uh, this is the furthest north part of the map. I think we've settled somewhere north, uh, towards the middle. So just imagine this equal area in all directions. And so there's a lot to explore. And I couldn't even imagine building and filling all this space here. Here you can see a lot of fields too that we were experimenting with to try to learn how bigger fields would work. What a 12 by 12 field would give for yield and how co uh, cows could actually graze on those fields and actually fertilize them of course by grazing and building orchards too and eventually learning to build multiple orchards and continuously building trees and rotating uh, the orchards and stuff as well and providing a little bit of a industrial district to the corner here uh, yeah you can see actually the three types of trees growing here and then also a furniture factory and some more storage for heavier industry such as the charcoal kiln and yeah even buildings here destroyed too another uh, kiln being destroyed and it looks like more and more um yeah more and more beautiful compost piles here and that is gorgeous man that is that is brown gold right there because of course it goes perfectly with those farm fields and on the opposite side we also have some uh barns here our barns that uh I think we were experimenting for the first time building a double barn here and trying to actually expand upon cows and learn what it would be like to split a herd and then be able to have that herd go into different parts of your city and then try to graze from them. Here we're actually, I think, uh, using them here uh, yeah, to graze just next to the barn as we were in a holding pattern for some of the orchards that we were building on the other side. Really cool to see that the barns, the second, the tier two barn, uh, does a great job of increasing the fertility or the uh, the breeding rate, I should say, of the uh, cows. So here we have a, a herd of six, and pretty soon that'll be up to 13, and then we'll be able to uh, kind of like cull the herd a little bit. There seems to still be some issues with the game uh, for the automation for that, but I have no problem hitting the slaughter button on my own. But splitting these into two has allowed us to experiment with multiple grazing sections all over the map. 
and uh, to see what they're like in just regular grass versus near an orchard uh, versus being on top of a field. And a lot of lack of fertility here. A lot of these fields dying as experimentation went on uh, to see how to increase their fertility. Um, you know, doing things like working small fields, blending them into larger fields, making bigger fields from the start. So a lot of lessons learned here and also a lot of mining here too of uh, iron ore and defending those. Great use of towers here, having these towers defend each other against uh, what seem to be endless waves of wolves and now uh, endless waves of invaders that love to take this road into town. But luckily once they hit the town, uh, they find only death. Every time that they try to get into town, there's a uh, tower. Tower's there, tower here, and then there's a tower uh, sometime they go down this road, yeah. And they'll break up down multiple paths of the uh, roads on either side of the fields and just pass the tower and die to death. So that's a good thing. But hey, we're profitable. We're not even really mining much gold here, if at all. And so everything is basically balanced by, look at that, almost 548 expenses on soldier training for all those towers. And uh, only 80 being spent on like the uh, theaters and such for the entertainment and everything else coming from like manufacturing and sales inside the town and or external trade these are the tier two theaters by the way they look great a lesson learned here too by the way is that these theaters can only house up or i guess take um or i guess give a service to let's say 30 homes so for every 30 homes that you build you need to have a another theater now the tier two can uh, give entertainment up to 40 so the tier 2 theater gives a higher desirability boost and can also provide entertainment up to 40 so here we can hold about 80 households in fact if we look at it uh, you can see here that it uh, costs us 32 per month and it looks like there's 57 out of the 40 so we'll probably have to build another one and continuously lay out of course you can spread out uh, do a spreadsheet and spread out your city via a spreadsheet but uh, it's only really mo mostly possible in a map like this with the lowland lakes is the version of this map which the uh, mountains are a little harder because of course you don't want to often build on a mountain because it takes a lot of time to uh, build around and square it up but also oftentimes the mountains have resources in them and you want to mine them and not actually make them uh, on display another great thing to look at here is over to our far east side we had a sand mine all the way over here so it shows how far your workers can actually be out of a city before they want shelters. At this moment too, uh, another great lesson learned about shelters. I built one over here for some of our forges and the people just don't seem to want to use uh, shelters unless we get about this distance from the city. Uh, all the way over here, if we have work done, uh, if people go all the way back home during a uh, snowy season or something, they're likely to die on the road. So that's what really the shelters are for, are for providing shelter uh, to people who might not be able to get firewood and food to a building uh, before winter or a backup in case a building is destroyed such as a guard tower in the winter great big old mountain here too definitely doing a great job of splitting the mount or the uh, river or the lake here in two and there's another lake here Th this lake could actually maybe possibly go all the way down looks like it ends here but it looks like there's a lot of fertile ground because of all these lakes too and uh, so we have a lot more farming area a lot more to explore look at that fertility there insane absolutely great and you can actually tell another thing i've learned in this game is because of the composition of the ground, you can actually find out that, for example, a clay deposit, well, that means you're gonna have a more clay-heavy mixture in your soil. So if you happen to build a farm here, you're gonna have a lot more uh, clay-heavy soil, so you might need to import sand. Uh, it also often means higher fertility, but then the soil mixture will have to be worked out too. So keep that in mind when you're building your cities as well. You might need to import sand and uh, like, for example, here's a much better area because there's no clay nearby, but you can still balance things out with clay or sand, especially if you're going to grow certain crops such as carrots. They require a little bit more sand, cabbage a little bit more clay, and uh, wheat's kind of in the middle, a little bit leaning, I think, closer towards sand. But, yeah, fantastic map. Of course, we explored with our military to clear countless numbers of wolf dens, and now you can see all the resources at our disposal for clay with all this moist soil and uh, lots of little lakes that we can expand to as well as a lot of willow haven't seen that for a while but that'll grow back near mostly near lakes but we also did find out that blueberry bushes will pretty much grow on any map now i've seen those uh, as we only used to think that they would be close to the lakes uh, they can pretty much grow anywhere but no blueberry farm here now we're actually making preserves in this map too if we take a look here at our food supply um we're actually making, yeah, 372 preserves, which is gobbling up an incredible amount of sand. 
all the sand that we've been mining and importing has been going directly towards that, and our people will not only buy glassware, but it's also used from the preservists. So right now we've got 28, not a lot, not a lot left. But if we take a look at the ratios too for the preservist building, um, I think that's right here. Yeah, so one glass and eight fruit makes uh, eight preserves. So at least it only takes one. But of course, we can make that out of berries, we can make that out of fruits, and we can make that out of vegetables. So it's a really great opportunity to uh, preserve things for a lot longer, as well as upgrading those root cellars. So that's why we built a lot of those things together. So keeping supply and things together uh, helps to organize it so you know where to find it, if and when it's destroyed, or if there's a problem, you know how to look at it. And of course, our look at this, barrels here. We're actually, we're preserving, we're preserving preserves in a root cellar in barrels. That's going to last for an insane amount of time, which for almost 500 people, we're almost up to 450. So just 50 more to go, uh, which won't be long considering the rate in which they're all having children. Uh, and we're making a lot of cheese and we've got preserves. Those are some of the things to note that we found a lot in this map too that really helped out was to find food that would be preserved for a long time. So obviously preserves. Fruit, cheese lasts the longest, and then of course smoked meat and fish with everything else really rotting quickly, especially uh, beans going, and berries. Berries probably the fastest rotting thing in the game, quickly followed by beans and then uh, bread and other things like that. Flour I haven't seen go bad for too often, but for whatever reason, the raiders seem to always try to steal it. So a beautiful city, one of the biggest cities, and could even be bigger. Look at all these houses too, by the way. Gorgeous. Yeah, these are the Tier 4 homes that are available currently in the early access version. The uh, Tier 4 homes and also the Tier 4 uh, town center in the background. Gorgeous. Almost all these buildings are upgraded to Tier 4 with more of them on the way. And just the awesome variety for all these buildings, too. Just looking absolutely stellar. So a big city, a serious city, and a well-laid-out city, too, at least for all of the lessons learned. A lot of lessons here uh, about moving houses around and uh, learning from all those mistakes, building graveyards too close, but also then having them in the city, but eventually the city swallowing them up. Let's go on to the next one. Let's see some more. Let's do it. And now on to a classic between Lake Raptoria, which you just saw, and Raptor Valley, the one you saw at the beginning, came Mount Raptoria. This city is really where a lot of strategies were developed for military and decoration level stuff, as of course the enemy is always attacking us. But this one, similar to the previous, had a lake below it, which allowed me to get a better start in understanding where the enemy would come from and where to put our focus, and also great expanse into farming, too, which, of course, is another defense against, well, starvation and Mother Nature. Lots of expansion on the farming techniques that you saw on the previous map, too, with two barns being put here, and a lot more thought being put into where to put things here, this farm being put on high land. And actually, uh, so detailed and, and observing the map enough to where a road leads all the way up to here to where a um, trader is always spawning. So giving them basically a red carpet here to go all the way past our farm into our city. You see here that there's a, a large industrial district being put here. Kind of trying to do this in the first city that you saw as well, but separating the heavy industry of the foundries and the blacksmiths and the glassmaker uh, all the way over here, far away from the city where it could possibly hurt desirability just like in the first map the civic center the uh, commercial district is in the lower section of the city of course we have ourselves uh, some manufacturing here of heavier things like for example planks and um, also bow and arrow and crossbow but nothing too heavy or disruptive like the clanking of the blacksmith or the constant uh, I don't know noise of the roaring of all the furnaces and carriages and things coming by all hours of the night so trying to put in a little bit more thought and trying to put more care into this as well. A hard start for farming in this map too, uh, trying to start out with small fields and then eventually expanding into the bigger fields. This map has been much better for our constant uh, adjustments and expansion without expanding uh, further out. We've been expanding by upgrading and kind of expanding things together. For example, this used to be, I believe, um, I think it was uh, four five by five fields and then the field up top and then just deleting those and doing it all together and then trying to affect the fertility by having cows come over. Still a work in progress, but learning a lot here and also managing to get a little tree in one of the fields too, which looks pretty cool. Uh, growing a lot of different uh, crops here and keeping everyone well fed. Still struggling with food a little bit, but also uh, doing a great job of at least trying to provide the uh, diversity of food, which has almost gotten us up to 300 people. Not bad. And uh, yeah, as you can see, of all the things wrong with this city, 
still coming down to the food. A little on the luxury goods, but that's probably related to glass. This city also has a lot of great defenses around it, too. A large wall in the north where there's lots of towers and barracks and uh, several barracks in the city, as well as a wall where we terraformed over and over and over and over and over again, flattening the land to eventually get it from uh, a hill like this. Try to put a little notch in it to where we could build a wall over it. Looks interesting. It reminds me of more of the Berlin Wall than it does like the Great Wall of China or something. It definitely looks more like the Berlin Wall if we zoom in and see this section. But then when we zoom out, it, uh, it's, it's somewhere uh, between the two, for sure. But anyway, all these towers along the wall have allowed us to, and we have more to build, uh, all the towers along the wall have given us great line of sight to see where the enemy may attack from. And typically, they attack from down here. So we're upgrading the barracks to Tier 2 to give us increased range and fire rate and troop production for when the enemy continuously spawns down here. Now, this is a map that's on small. This is the small size of the map, and as you see, at about uh, 84, 84 years, we've been able to uh, fill up the entire map, um, or at least most of it, with wall and also our city. So uh, I got to say, for PCs that might perform a little uh, less effectively, or even my PC, which is a beast, this map size, not bad. Kind of like it. Most of it's taken up by the uh, lake in the middle, but I, I really like the layout here. A uh, lake in the middle with a mountain up towards the top and a few other mountains around. Did a great job for all the different uh, landscapes here. Interesting, every map is a little bit different too in terms of its uh, layout with trees. This map having absolutely no clay, so all of it must be imported. And uh, we have uh, lots and lots of sand though, so we can definitely trade what I still believe is the most difficult resource to get, which is uh, glassware. It seems to be very time consuming to get the sand either to buy it or to mine it and then to bring it over to a glassware maker it takes a lot a lot of hands uh, six people can work I believe in the glass maker and then six people inside the sand mine and typically you want more than one sand mine so and you end up getting almost 20 people related to the glassware industry because if you think about the preservist and a few other bu uh, buildings and other people associated with it there's a lot of work to be done but I gotta say all these trees that I just randomly put down are now a theme or a style that I want to use in all of my cities it's definitely um, a great little separation between your uh, industrial areas or even the farms. I mean, it still gives something nice to look at even if you were here at the town hall, which it is nice to look down and see all the fields down there. Would be great to also have done blueberries here and see what looks to be almost like, um, I don't know, a vineyard or something down here too. And I would love to see more of that in this game as well. It's beautiful how the game just has vibrant nature. Everything made from natural materials, all this wood, stone, brick, all the trees, all the woodwork, nothing is plasticky or metallic really some things are made of metal but very rarely do you actually see a structure uh, made of anything other than uh, wood or brick or stone and that's a, a great thing which really makes this game one of the most beautiful games i've ever seen again that fall transition from spring to fall and then i uh, sorry from summer to fall and into winter it looks gorgeous spring interesting summer almost just kind of boring really just that typical uh, bright light that you're used to seeing for all the uh you know city builder days but man things really come alive throughout the year and i really need more games to uh, show that off also we had an insane amount of people die in this map due to uh, wolves that were down here in the southern section down here there were about three or four wolf dens we finally i believe cleared them all out so our people are finally safe and now we just have the wolves if you know what i mean the invaders the raiders who come in and uh, so a lot of people died from that and uh we were just continuously finding that, but also death waves came into the city. Since the city's been around for 84 years, most of the city's uh, life has, well, just died to death. I mean, again, if we take a look here, 55 elderly, 79 seniors, that's more population than I think that we have uh, adult and uh, before. So most of this population will continue to die off, and uh, we're building like a nat a national cemetery here making it look nice again rather than just tucking it into the corner as you saw in the previous city actually making a, a nice sight to behold here and a great investment of our materials we have so much stone around i just built everything out of stone which started the whole stone wall thing and again this also helps to protect the city for if the invaders no nah, not if when the invaders get through the wall of course they'll take the roads and we can better defend ourselves and defend things that are important another great note here is i do believe that of all these gravestones you see these smaller, uh, more insignificant stones. Every Raptorian is valuable and special, of course. But these smaller stones are people who I believe were either poor or were earlier 
died earlier in the city and so thus they didn't really have a lot of money and not a lot was going on with the city and later on for the tier three tier four homes you kind of see some of these nicer uh, gravestones and i believe for the wealthy in the city you can kind of see some of these nicer ones so uh we've gone from gravestones that are kind of more like uh, this nature to these to then these larger almost uh, getting approaching like mausoleum level stuff where you're actually seeing some really nice uh, gravestones and such and I think that's a reflection on the wealth of the city as everybody is pretty much in a tier 4 home there's a few tier 3 homes over here but everybody's really living their best life with everybody mostly dying of old age and the game could do a little bit more work in showing you that but if we look here most people are dying of uh, let's see decline uh, we see here you know four people dying this year uh, mostly of natural causes yeah four to four for natural causes here uh, we can roll back to year 77 and see that about pretty much every year we had a, um, a death of about seven people, and then it kind of creeped all the way down to about two, and then shot right back up again. Uh, so there can be kind of those rolling death waves, although I haven't seen it too bad here, except for in this map. It, it was a lot of waiting for uh, more and more people to be born, more and more people to, uh, of course, grow up to the working age of going through infant to child to adolescent, and then finally adult. And then all the adults who were here, and a lot of elderly who immigrate. Uh, yeah, immigrated to the city, um, eventually dying here in our graveyard. So I'm, I'm glad that we put this so far out, yet it seems like such a great part of the city. It's, of course, over here where it's nice and quiet, but doesn't feel like it's not a part of things. So, just fantastic. A uh, couple of uh, theaters here facing forward and uh, some more decorations here and a lot more optimization with uh, laying out this city than before and making really good use of very tight space. And this is kind of similar to that eastern side of that first map where it curves around the mountain, where yet again, there's a mill up on a hill. And I've got to say the most recent map is probably my favorite in terms of uh, having all the things from the previous maps, you know, the southern lake, except we have a southern and an eastern lake and almost like a western lake too. Lots of things going on. So that third map... Uh, the one that I recently most started on w was great. So now there's a lot of other uh, cities that I abandoned and tried for other recordings and such. Of course, the other city of, uh, oh, wow, he, eight people want to move in. Come on in. But yeah, the abandoned city of, uh, uh, well, we have Fort Raptoria and New Raptoria, which were kind of more initial starting cities that just became messy and unoptimized, which we'll go take a look at just for a few minutes. But those cities, uh, of course, were, oh, man, those were like early before we had the update. And finally in this city, we got the big O update and I was happy to see it. All right, let's take a peek at the uh, two remaining cities I'd like to see uh, that we really worked on of New Raptoria, Fort Raptoria, and see how they differ from this one. One of our best cities, Mount Raptoria. Let's go. Oh boy, you ever hear the saying, if I knew then what I know now? Man, this city could definitely deserve it. Well, this is Fort Raptoria, a city which we played many times with a lot of seemingly uh, lacked progress. Actually, I opened this one up just now and I'm just shocked at how little seems to have been done. But to be fair, one, it was really my first major city. Two, there were so many lag issues at this point that I think we decided to start a new city in a different map just to see if it would affect it. And then, of course, falling in love with that. But really just chalking everything up to experience and seeing all the uh, potential beauty in this map. Great thing, too, by the way, is any time that you love a map, you can see the seed at the bottom. But also, we have the option to restart the map. So I could actually come back to any of these maps at any time and essentially revert the city back to before I had anything to do with it. And then uh, build a new city in a new place and uh, make improvements and such. And uh, although it's, it's quite nice, it's amazing how... Uh, how this seems like the city was so spread out back then, but actually it's relatively small considering all the landscape around us and how I would do things differently. Oh yeah, there's that brickyard again with extra help. Yeah, it's at 600. They must have increased the numbers and stuff, so people will be around to quote-unquote repair it. But anyway, a beautiful lake here, gorgeous. This is a map too that makes me wish there were boats or some sort of river traffic so that way we could ship things from the upper sections of the city, like the sand pit up there. Let's say there was like a uh, some sort of a glass facility down here where there was like a coal mine or something and we built that closer to there It'd be really cool to be able to ship things But you know what really this map really makes me think about all the differences in the grass too and how you can just see the different types of um, The difference between fertility and the difference between kind of like um, I don't know um, Like landscape and biomes essentially like you can see where uh, the fresher grass like with flowers and brighter greens 
kind of mix up against here with like the taller bushes and grass and things like that. So, and you can actually almost see the differences in the soil fertility just by looking at the grass. Like seriously, like you could tell where this is different than this. And so there's gonna be a difference between these two and eventually you can kind of see it fading off. So the developers did a fantastic job with this. I've been playing some first person hunting games recently and this is just incredible at how nature looks so alive and so does our city too and even though sometimes we take over a lot of the um you know the city with the or the city gobbles up the uh, farms and and uh, other types of buildings creep into uh, fields of uh, beautiful grass and trees and we cut down all those forests to make fields and then put a farm field there this looks a lot more beautiful with the edges of the farm field than it does with like a for example a parking lot modern day you know in instead of this being filled with cars and just being a hellscape um, it's nice to actually see a few things growing here and whatnot. Kind of interesting that they're not using that section of the field. But regardless, a very small city with lots of cool little techniques we were testing out, like rounded roads and curves and building windmills up high to see if they would have any sort of effect on production and uh, getting some of the buildings up to maybe Tier 3. Looks like most things are Tier 2, but probably ready for Tier 3 and a lot of decorations and stuff being made around it with this beautiful little, uh, this little, like, peninsula here really looks nice would love to uh, rebuild on the city and build like for example the town hall here and maybe make the city facing this way where we would actually look at it this way so a lot of these maps we could come back to with all the techniques that we learned previously and uh, might be something you want to do too where you take some of your old maps and return to them and build a city anew by literally just clearing the map and uh, using new techniques keep things fresh yet uh you know familiar territory love it first real map we started on Got to give myself credit. Things look rather nice considering that we knew nothing and uh, that we know a lot more now. Uh, going from like uh, 10 to 16 hours in to 160 hours, you definitely see a lot of potential here for things I would change and would love to improve upon. Really not a lot of time in this city either. I think it's really about, uh, boy, less than probably 15 hours on this one as where the city you just saw was probably about 40 or 50. 84 years in on that one. This one's only 20. Yeah, so that one definitely had a lot more time. And of course, all the previous cities under its belt too, of all the previous cities we built, including this one. So this one contributing to those other great successes. All right, let's go see one more final city. Let's go. Well, she's back from the dead. For those of you who might remember this one, of course, well, it's the recording series map of New Raptoria. Uh, with no lakes. Yeah, uh, even after a hot fix, even after reloading and uh, goofing around with the save, this one's still kind of borked to where there should be... Actually, lagging now. There should be lakes and such over here where you're seeing uh, tremendously flat land and rocks. Apparently, trees are actually growing now. Where Yeah, this, this uh, hard stone should actually be where a lake is. And interestingly, uh, I can't believe it. Cr looks like trees are creeping in. And bushes and things, too? Well, I, I guess so. I guess that makes sense that... Uh, berry bushes and like hazelnut th trees and things like that can creep in when uh, other trees are growing because that simulates what would be there for uh, the forager. Interesting. Well, anyway, if you haven't seen this map before, there was a tremendous lake here, just like how many of the other maps had. And I could probably re-roll to fix it, but this one's got a lot of problems and such from uh, various version fixes and being an earlier city with a lot of ambition. Uh, same thing here that we saw in one of the more recent maps, the uh, towers up here providing defense. Big old beautiful mountain with lots of gold ore up there. Over 5,000 gold times two, it looks like. Or at least between the... I, I guess these are two deposits that equal one where we can mine it uh, from either node and it'll be connected. But hey, 5,000 gold is insane and that's a great potential for the future. But you might remember this one uh, building here a little bit uh, of a wall. Lessons learned from the, re uh, the live stream series. We're going here into a recording series to try to make it a little bit more simple. Um, to take all those lessons and make it into a, into a smaller uh, city, but also kind of act as a tutorial. But had a lot of pro it started out great, a lot of wonderful quick builds here, and probably one of the most efficient cities in terms of quick expansion, getting from tier one to tier two in a flash, and tier three, two to three, like never before. Uh, city has yet to reach tier four, but uh, many problems of the uh, game kind of broke down. And uh, spoil that fun. But really, I wouldn't mind, honestly, restarting this one and building again. Great landscape over here uh, for the farms. And as you can see, this dark area here is where the lake would have been. Uh, so there, there's, I think there's actually a lake that was supposed to uh, be over here, too. Is there can't really be... A lot of this uh, rock and stuff is not 
not something you can farm on. It shows high fertility, but this is literally pure stone and, and sand and such. And so, uh, wow. Yeah, it looks like the lake's being retaken too. I can actually see some bushes growing here uh, inside of it and across this uh, what looks to be an island. Funny enough, one of you also said that you had a island with gold on it where it was inaccessible. So bridges and stuff would be great for the future. But any sort of gray like this is where a lake used to be and uh, fertility is probably from uh, plants and such regrowing. So, But yeah, uh, fantastic map. This is one that definitely looks like the uh, first city that we built, the one that you just saw. But also reminds me a bit of the uh, city Mount Raptoria, the one with all the beautiful walls that we first were exploring that technique with but decoration super important a lot of great important uh, layout stuff to be learned still but uh, not really going for any sort of optimization in terms of um, efficiency of you know one of these parks every block you know spreadsheeting it not so fun but uh, building a city differently but also this very much the same every time is certainly appealing hey and a little blueberry farm here look at that wow Right, well, if you want to know how to do the blueberry farm stuff, make sure you check the channel. Thanks again, everybody, for subscribing. I'm going to wrap this one up for now and probably wrap up Farthest Frontier for a little bit after playing about 170 hours. I think I need a day off for this one, so we'll uh, come on back to more Farthest Frontier sometime soon for live streams and videos and more. Cover major updates and new features, content, new tiers, new buildings, and new ways to play sometime soon thanks again everybody for watching there is a crazy amount of tutorials and videos and live streams on the channel for this one so if this or banished or kingdoms reborn or foundation or ostrave or any sort of resource-based city builder like anno 1800 or even money-based builders such as uh, of course the lovely and fantastic city skylines make sure you subscribe today game is really wanting my attention jeez calm down I'll be back soon. All right, I'll see you all. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks for the kindness, positivity, encouragement down below in the comments section, and I hope to see you all very soon. Thanks for watching.